All right, let's go ahead and continue with our scenario here. Uh, again, we're gonna we have this PC here, 192.168.1.100, gonna send a packet to 192.168.4.100 over here, different network. Again, uh, notice that our switches, Ethernet switches, MAC address tables are currently empty. We're gonna see how they get populated. Also, our two end devices, their ARP tables are currently empty. We'll see how they get populated as well. All right. So in this case here, we uh, 192.168.1.100 is going to send a packet to 192.168.4.100. There's our IP packet. Okay. Because it is connected via Ethernet, we're going to, it's going to encapsulate this packet in an Ethernet frame. Now it knows its source MAC address. That's on its Ethernet NIC card. But because the uh, destination IP address 192.168.4.100 is on a remote network, not on its directly connected network that we see here. Okay, not on its directly connected network. It says I can't send it. It says here uh, it's not on my directly connected network. So I can't get there. I have to send it to my default gateway. That's what I mean by quad zero here slash zero, my default gateway. And that IP address is 192.168.1.1. That device is on my network like it should be. Now that's its IP address, but I don't know its MAC address. And that's what I need here. I need my default gateway. It's, uh, it's MAC address. I know it's IP address. So how do I get that? Well, we do that with a ARP request. So, well, first it looks it up in its ARP table. Does it already know this? So 192.168.1.1, the default gateway, put in there so we know what we're looking for, but that is not in its ARP table. So it puts this packet on hold in this Ethernet frame with this packet on hold and sends out what's called an ARP request. This is a broadcast, an Ethernet broadcast. Okay, so it goes out its Ethernet NIC, and it, it's an Ethernet frame that uh, is going from its MAC address to everybody, a broadcast. And the ARP message inside it says basically, hey, I'm looking for who's ever 192.168.1.1, send me your MAC address. Now, first of all, this Ethernet switch has received this Ethernet frame. Okay, and it learned that on port one is AAA. That's how it builds its tables. Okay, so everybody on this Ethernet segment receives this ARP request. Everybody ignores it except the router. It says, hey, I'm 192.168.1.1. That's the ARP request that you're sending. So let me send you, first of all, I'm going to send you an ARP reply. But before I do that, look what I just did down here. What it did was it captured it from the ARP request, the IP address and the, let me make sure you can see that, the IP address and the MAC address that was in the ARP request. So now it can send an ARP reply directly to the MAC address of the, the sender of the ARP request, in that case, this PC. All right, so it's gonna send a ARP reply. This device, our PC here, receives the ARP reply, says, great, I've been waiting on this. I knew your IP address, 192.168.1.1. Okay, that's, that's the, uh, was the, what I was looking for in the ARP request. You just sent me your MAC address. Now, our switch, by the way, before we get to our PC, I forgot to mention, our switch just received, when it received that Ethernet frame, just learned on port two, source MAC address 111. That's how it learns, that's how it builds its table, okay? So when it gets frames for devices with these destination MAC addresses, it knows which port to send it out of. If it doesn't know, it sends it out all ports, called an unknown unicast. All right, let's get back to this device here. Receives the ARP request, says, great. Uh, let me put your MAC address that you gave me from the ARP reply, okay? Uh, got the ARP reply back, put your MAC address there, and I'm going to put your and put your MAC address here. Now I can send out this, this Ethernet frame. Now remember, this frame, the ultimate destination is a device in another network. The whole idea of sending it to the default gateway 
the IP address of the default gateway is just so it can get the MAC address associated with that default gateway IP address so it can send it now to the router's NIC card from this NIC card on this PC to the NIC card of the router. Okay. All right. So what's going to happen here is the router receives it and de-encapsulates the Ethernet header. Now, what does it do that? Let me back up one here. The router says, oh, MAC address 111, that's me, 111. So when it receives this Ethernet frame, it knows to de-encapsulate the Ethernet header. And what does a router do? It routes. Let's take a look. So this router says, OK, let me take a look at this destination IP address in this IPv4 packet. 192.164.100. Do I have a match in my routing table? I do. And this match tells me I'm going to send it to the next hop IP address. It means, first of all, I'm not, I'm not directly connected to it. I'm not directly connected to this device's network. So I'm not di directly connected to this device. My routing tables tell me send it to another router. That other router has the IP address 192.168.2.2. That's this router right here. And if that's got to go out my gig zero one interface. Yeah, I corrected that from the previous video. <laughs> okay. All right. Corrected it above too. All right. So it's going to send out the gig zero one interface, but it's got to encapsulate it in a new, new, brand new Ethernet frame. Source MAC address says, well, I'm going to send out my gig zero one interface. Oh, I know my MAC address for that. It's 222. I'm sending it out this interface. Okay. Gig zero one. 222. Let me just put that right there. There we go. Destination MAC address. Well, what's the destination MAC address associated with 192.168.2.2? Let me check my ARP table. Hey, I just happen to have that. Now, if I didn't from a previous ARP request, I would do an ARP request. Whoever has 192.168.2.2, send me your MAC address. Router R2 would say, that's me. Here it is at 333. It would go in the ARP table. Okay. But I happen to have that already. So let me just put that right here in the Ethernet header. And I'm done with it. All I have to do now is forward it out my gig01 port. Okay, my gig01 interface. And I'm done with it. Now it's the next router's problem to deal with. All right. So now router R2 receives it. <clears throat> and it's going to de-encapsulate the frame once again. It, it knows it. router R2 says, yep, this is for me, destination MAC address, 333. That's me, 333. Okay. So now it's my responsibility to forward this packet. Let me see. I got rid of the old Ethernet frame. Now I'm just looking at the data, which is an IPv4 packet, specifically the destination IPv4 address. 192.168.4.100. Is that in my routing table? It is. Similar to router R1, it's not directly connected to this network either. <clears throat> the only way it can get there is via another router. And that other router is uh, at next hop IP address 192.168.3.2 out its gig 00 interface. It says, okay, no problem. I'll just send this to router R3. Okay, but it's going out my gig 00 interface. So let me put it in a new, brand new Ethernet frame. My source MAC address is 444 on that gig 00 interface. Each interface will have a different MAC address. And it will say, okay, no problem. But, oh, you know, what's the destination MAC address? I know who I'm sending this to is at 192.168.3.2. But what's its MAC address? Well, I had previously done an ARP request, got an ARP reply said, hey, who's 192.168.3.2? Send me your MAC address. Router R3 said, that's me. And told me its MAC address is 555. And I actually already put it right here in my ARP table. All right, now I'm going to take that 555, put it right here in the destination MAC address. And I can now get rid of this, this, this packet and let router R3 deal with it, the next hop router. Almost there. Router R3 gets it. Oh. Keep on going too fast here. Router R3 says 555. Yep, that's me. That's my MAC address. I'll deal with this. It's all mine now. Same process. Examines the destination IP address for a, 
a best match or longest match. We'll talk about that in more detail later. And finds that, yes, hey, I have that in my routing table. Hey, I'm directly connected on my gig zero zero interface. What does that mean? That means I have a, an IP address on my on gig zero zero that shares the same network as the destination. That means I do not have to send it to another router. I can send it to this destination IP address directly. And it's gonna go out my gig zero zero interface. So let's get it ready. Let's put it in a brand new ethernet frame. My source MAC address, well, gig zero zero, my source MAC address is 666. So let's do that. Ah, but hey, I need to send it to 192.164.100. Let's see if that's in my ARP table. Rick purposely did not put it in there. So let's see the process. Router R3 says, I'm going to put this on hold. Yes, yeah, so routers send ARP requests just like end devices. Okay, and re respond to ARP replies just like end devices. Anybody that has an IPv4 address and an Ethernet NIC card, which has a MAC address, they're participating in ARP, period. All right, so puts this packet on hold, going to send out an ARP request. The ARP request is a broadcast. Okay, so basically it just says whoever's 192.168.4.100, send me your, your MAC address. Now we can see that went via the switch. Okay, the switch just learned, hey, on port two is MAC address 666. All right, this device here receives the ARP request and says, oh, you're looking for 192.168.4.100? That's me. But let me grab your IP address and MAC address and put it in my ARP table, okay? That information is in the ARP request. Okay, it's the sender's IP address and the sender's MAC address. Okay, that way now this device can communicate with this whoever sent the ARP request. So let's send the ARP reply now. The ARP reply goes out. Okay, it's basically with this device's IP address and MAC address. It's going to send it. But notice it went through the switch again. The switch just learned on port one is BBB. Ah, see how it learns and builds the stuff so it can use it later for whenever it receives a destination MAC address with these MAC addresses here. It knows exactly what port to send it out of and only that port. Okay. Once again, if it doesn't know, it's not a big deal. It just floods it out all ports, but the incoming port known as an unknown unicast. All right. But I digress. All right. There's the ARP reply. Our router R3 receives it, says, thank you very much. I'll put that information in my ARP table. Your 192.168.4.100, I knew that. But now I have your MAC address, BBB. I'm going to put that right here in the Ethernet header, destination MAC address. Now I can send you that Ethernet frame. Now, by the way, when it sends it, it's sending it to MAC address BBB, right? That's in the table. So the switch knows to send it just out port one. Isn't that cool? All right, so our end device receives it, says, oh, BBB, yep, that's me. Great, de-encapsulate it. This packet's for me. I know a lot going on here, okay? But uh, I hope this begins to put it together and make sense for you. All right, and we'll take a look later how routing tables get built and all this other cool stuff. Hope you enjoyed this video.